Hello and welcome to another informative edition of Talking CRM. With me as always is my co-host, Megan Hewer. Megan, how are you today? I'm great, Colin. How about you? Doing okay. And um, you may ask, why do we have a green screen up here? Something you might ask. I, I'm curious, as a matter of fact, that's new. What's going on? Um, well, this ties in to our, our next guest. Um, we're going to be talking about employee innovation and things that workers can do now that they're more remote um, to adapt and connect um, in this more adaptable and connectable digital world. Uh, so the green screen is here. We're going to uh, show some effects uh, during some time during the conversation. But before we do that, let's be sure to introduce today's guest, Darcy Bevilacqua, expert and advisor in all things customer experience and recruiter to the stars in digital and CX. Darcy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, Colin. I'm looking forward to talking to your audience and uh, having a fun time today. As are we, and you know, understanding uh, you know, first how to kind of use employees as that engine of innovation is always something that we're trying to harness. And you're going to, as I understand, share a few case studies with us? I am. Excellent. Um, so why don't we start it off? Uh, Megan, did you want to roll with the first question? Yeah, and Darcy, thank you so much for being with us today. We're excited to learn from you. Um, and one of the things I think people may be sort of thinking about right now is, gosh, you know, this is talking CRM. How, why are we talking about employees? And in fact, I think, Darcy, one of the reasons we were so excited to have you on the show and, and to talk about the idea of employee experience and employee-led innovation is because, of course, you can't have a great customer experience without having incredibly engaged employees. So um, we were really excited to have you join us today and talk with us about the connection between your employees and the experience that you create for them and what you learn from them and the impact that that can have on creating an excellent customer experience. So I'm um, excited to have you have you talk about that. Um, maybe let's let's kick things off with um, a question I know um, a lot of leaders have, and that is, you know, how can you better tap into the wisdom and insights and um, innovation of your employee base? What are some of the best things you've seen companies do really to learn from their employees? Well, one of the things is you have to create a safe environment where employees actually can feel that they can contribute. Um, if they feel that they're not being listened to or that their ideas don't matter, they will stop contributing. So one of the first things you want to do is sort of build innovation into your everyday work with your employees and make it a part of what you're actually doing. So you have to create a culture where innovation is valued for people to feel it's important and want to spend time on it. You also have, it's better if you have a team that's a little bit more diverse. The more different kinds of people you have in your team, the more they're gonna come up with different kinds of ideas. And that of course works in your favor anyway, because all of us are trying to create a more diverse workforce and we have diversity goals, but that's not only just something for HR. You'll actually find you get better ideas when you get people from different backgrounds together, because then not everybody has the same opinion. They have different ideas. Um, another thing that you need to think about is just sort of providing a little time for people to innovate. So either like once every other week or something, you have a little short period of time where you give people time to innovate and either they can innovate by themselves or they can innovate together in little teams or you can give them the problem of the week for them to be working on together. Um, but you have to create a little time in the day for that. Um, also, you need some way of collecting the information back from people. Um, one great example is a company called Delta Dental, who actually had an employee suggestion box, but no one thought it was their job to take the collection. So employees would write great suggestions and they would sit there and sit there and sit there. And when they did their employee journey mapping, they found out that there were all these recommendations in this box that no one paid attention to. So they opened the box up and they started reading it and there were some wonderful ideas that they've started to implement. And since that time, they now actually have a committee whose job it is to go through all the employee recommendations every week, look at them, evaluate them, and then actually think about implementing the ones that kind of make sense, but giving everybody feedback, even the ones that they're not accepting or adopting now about um, why they're not going to work on that. And they call that act now and it, has made a significant difference in people's attitude about working there. And also lots of little small things 
that they've done that made employers just happier on the job and therefore more productive. Um, so there's other things you should be thinking about is like rewards and recognition, especially right now, employees are feeling very nervous and anxious. So if you can find a way to recognize people's contribution, that'll make a big difference. And sometimes it's just as simple as calling them out, putting them in a the newsletter, posting them on your employee site, giving them a shout out, whatever it is, but it really does make a difference. People need to feel that you're valuing what they're doing. Um, and then sometimes you need to have some tools. A lot of people are using collaboration tools just in their everyday job. So you can certainly use those kinds of tools um, to do innovation as well. Um, and then the last thing I just say is senior management means, needs to support the idea that innovation is, is important. And by that meaning at the long run, they need to provide money and people resources to get things done. So if the culture is such that you're worrying that you think innovation is important, you really get a lot of great innovation. If the culture thinks the product is most important and the customers will just figure it out, then you really aren't going to get much innovation. Um, and it doesn't matter what you as a manager are trying to do if the culture is not going to support you. So hopefully that's, yeah. <laughs> that's been a little long-winded answer. <laughs> a great answer though. And I think, I think your point is well taken, right? Is, is if you create an environment inside an organization where people feel valued, where they feel heard and where they feel recognized and rewarded um, and where, you know, truly you've got leaders who make it clear that they value, you know, not just the employees, but the ideas that come from them, you're absolutely going to have a more successful business because you've got the best ideas. And, and I also appreciated um, you mentioning kind of the goal of diversity. And, and I think one of the things that um, is often overlooked on innovation teams is um, diversity of thought, right? And, and angles that people come at solving problems from. Um, and how do you make sure that when you are putting together groups of people that you are thinking about, gee, you know, what is that sort of person's typical area of expertise or, or how do they think about solving a problem and how will that complement the others on the team? So I, I think that that was a, um, and also challenge the others on the team, right? So that you've got people coming at things from different directions, but I think that was a, um, a really great shout out. So thank you for that. Darcy, one of my questions is um, about the, uh, what is the new water cooler out there, right? Um, you know, what are, now that we're not together, um, we're not having these informal um, organizations and meets and um, in interactions, you know, what are some of the best tools out there that managers, team members can think about to start to gather and, and harness, um, you know, great ideas from, from the employee base, wherever they might be? Well, obviously, Zoom is still a, a tool or um, Teams or meetings or any of those are great ways to do it. Also, tools like Slack, where you can communicate with each other um, very quickly. But um, even some have knowledge management tools. A lot of the organizations have um, the knowledge management. Well, it helps you understand kind of who's the experts in those areas, what information do you already have, because sometimes you get stuck on a part of a problem and you don't quite know how to fix it. So having a knowledge management tool to be able to figure out who in the organization does know about that one little thing and could help you will let you move on with the innovation and instead of being stopped dead in your tracks because you don't understand it well enough. So you might need an engineer, you might need an analytics person, you know, you might need even somebody in finance to help you estimate what something might cost. Um, so all of those resources are needed in, in order to make great innovation. So it's helpful to be able to have access to other people in the organization and a knowledge management system is one of the ways that happens. If you're a smaller company, everybody knows everybody, you probably don't need that. But in the larger organizations, you actually do. What kind of innovation are we talking about? Is it uh, you know, internal ways of working? Is it product service, things that would be customer facing? You know, what are some of the ways that um, employee innovation can impact um, the bottom line and, and what the, the customer eventually sees? Well, I think there's two or three different ways to think about innovation. One, of course, is in, in, uh, improving the products that you provide to customers, either um, adding features or adding new products to supplement the ones that you already have. So that is an innovation where you're trying to do new products. Another one is um, generally most consumers 
think of an organization as one piece. And we all know from being inside of these organizations, they don't actually work very effectively. So the second one is sort of process design and internal communications. So when something is moves from department to department, there's an easier way of managing how that issue, that problem, that complaint, that concern gets handled. So I would say there's process innovation, there's new product innovation are really key. And a lot of times it's just organizational silos. Sometimes the left hand and the right hand don't actually know what's going on. Um, and so they are doing things that conflict with each other, not on purpose, but, but that's because they didn't know it. And one of the ways that you can uh, bring those things alive is by experience mapping, which is the same thing, process that you use for the customer experience mapping. You, exactly the same process where you go through and you map it and then you show people all the different pieces that are involved in the problem because you can't solve it if you don't have a consensus and agreement on what is the problem and who's involved. At least that way you can get together the right group to start solving for the problem and putting together interim solutions that you think might work better. Here, here, well said. Um, reminds me of uh, another conversation in CX we had about root cause analysis and you know the importance of getting the magic that happens. I, I feel when you get cross-functional folks together focused on one problem, um, you can usually find you know certainly the root cause and uh, a lot of times get really down the road towards a solution. So I think that's great. All right. So to, I guess for an example, there's Chibani who they actually wanted to bring new products to market sooner. And they are a, they make um, yogurt um, and they make uh, the heavy style, more Greek style yogurt. And in order to be able to go to market more quickly, to be able to create healthier yogurts and, and more what consumers were asking for, they actually put their own internal team together and they got rid of their ad agency, their PR agency, all the external vendors that they were using and worked on it internally. And they were able to bring new products to market in less than six months which for them was a record because before it took them 18 months. So sometimes just harnessing the right people in the organization and letting them focus on something that everybody agrees is important really can speed up innovation in a way that you can go to market more quickly and more effectively. Yeah, Darcy, I think that's a great example. And we certainly are uh, big fans of Chobani yogurt in my house. So glad to hear that uh, <laughs> we're supporting a company that respects its employees and brings them into, uh, into innovation. So good to know. Um, you know, a, a question for you kind of building on that. And, and as we're all thinking about sort of, the, I'll, I'll call it the new normal with so many companies um, saying that they plan to stay remote, you know, for an indefinite period, sort of work at home if you want to, many more kinds of flexible working arrangements. Um, that's really good in a lot of ways, I think, for people. But it, it also means that this is no longer a temporary situation that we're in. You know, the, the way that we need to think about being focused and productive and, and helping our team stay together um, is going to become an ongoing requirement for businesses um, and something that you really need to be conscious of. What are some suggestions that you have for how businesses can help people stay focused, stay productive, um, stay innovative um, in the you know kind of weeks, months, years, even ahead? What what are some ideas that you'd give people? Okay, so the um, one of the acronyms that people use for thinking about how you do this is what they call basics: bonding, agility, safety, inclusion, um, compassion, and strategic alignment. And so let, let's talk about bonding. Bonding is one of the things that people are having trouble with now is you used to feel part of a team, even if it was because uh, you all sat together at the office, you had meetings together, you'd see each other running around in the hallways. And so one of the issues that seems to be concerning with people now is there is less feeling of bonding and more feeling that you're in this um, situation by yourselves. Bonding of getting people together as a team and making them feel valuable as a team is still really, really important in terms of pe getting people to be productive and less anxious and also feeling that somebody else has their back. And the key ways to do that is actually creating some things that your team can do together. Um, some interesting things I've seen recently is where um, uh, a large organization decided that they needed to do something for the communities that they were underserved. So they look for opportunities to figure out how could we do something good in this environment? And um, what they did was find uh, three or four communities and they start put their call centers there. And the reason for doing that was because it would create jobs in areas that were underserved 
and were close to the communities that their people lived in. Um, and the employees were the ones who came up with that's what they could do. I've, I've seen other examples where employees have come up with ideas for how could you serve people in their community better, whether it's um, you know, delivering packages, putting money in for innovation, to um, help with reading and reading mentors via uh, even online, creating some kind of care for being able to uh, bring dogs into hospitals. So all kinds of ways that employees are feeling like they're doing something together to, communi to help their community and to help each other. Um, so then you wanna say agility is the second point. And agility is really thinking about how do you make your workforce more flexible than they used to be? Because the idea of you go and you do things the same way just isn't gonna work. And so part of that is providing them with better tools. Uh, part of that is training. There's certainly training in, in terms of how to go from the old kinds of projects of waterfall to more agile development and, and how to do workshops to make that more effective. Um, so I think that that's one of the ways of doing that. Then when you talk about safety, everybody is very focused on safety now, but safety isn't going to be enough. So yes, you have to have safety. So in safety is you have to have masks, you have to have distancing, you have to have ways of, of tracing the virus, you have to have cleanliness. Um, but probably safety is, won't, is going to be basics. And if you have safety only, that will not be enough to make employees feel like they want to come back to work and they want to be productive. So I think you need to think a little further than that. The next one is kind of inclusion. And inclusion really means feeling like you're a part of your own group again, and that there's something special and unique about your team. And, and part of that is thinking about how maybe it's giving your team a new name or letting the employees name you guys, or maybe it's um, providing them with uh, some kind of new t-shirt or something, but trying to create events where they work together to solve problems. So they feel they are in it together. And sometimes it's just sharing tips and things like, how are you teaching your kids at, at home schooling? Um, how are you dealing with stress? What kind of yoga apps make the most amount of sense for us to do? So there's all kinds of ideas for you know, groups to be able to be sharing with each other, to realize that this is a very difficult situation and you need to help each other. And inclusion is one way of making people feel welcome, feel that they're not in this alone and feeling that help is going to be there for them. And it's not just, you know, we, we're going to give you a paycheck, but we're going to provide you with mental health services, social services, and all kinds of other things that you may need. Um, one of the things that we're seeing is um, a lot of the companies now, because financial concerns are huge, are helping employees by um, paying them. They have something called daily pay or pay active. So instead of paying people on their normal payroll schedule every two weeks, employees can then get their pay now, um, today, if they need it. Because maybe you get paid on, on the second of the month, but your rent's due on the first. You can get all the payments that you need now um, so you can pay your rent on time and not be overdue. And that's a big concern for employees. And so then um, compassion is, is the next one. And compassion is really making sure that you're getting in touch with your employees every day and understanding that they're struggling with teaching their kids, worrying about the virus, um, Working, they're actually working longer hours and giving them breaks and making sure that they feel that you understand what is needed and that you can work around their schedule and be a little more flexible than you normally used to be in order to make their lives um, better. And then S is strategic alignment. Because the organization directions may have changed, your products may have changed, your, your product focus may have changed, your customer sets that are most important may have changed you need to tell your employees what your current strategy is going to be because it many companies are even changing who they're going after and what their business models look like employees can't stay up with you if you don't keep informing them so it's important to give them the strategic um, information all the time and if there's gaps because of the new strategy you need to have a plan for how you're going to fill those gaps and how you're going to train people up so that they're ready for that new product that new service and they know how to train other, other employees, they know how to work with the customers, they know how to get the things done internally that they need to do to make these things effective. And for the folks at home, that acronym was BASIC? BASICS, B-A, 
S I C S. Basics. Basics. <laughs> we'll put it up here on the big screen. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I think that that last one too around strategic alignment. Um, I know I would sit in in you know all company meetings in previous roles that I've held, and and as a leader, you feel like, hey, you know, I've communicated these things a few times. This is this is something people should know. But invariably, you'd get questions in those meetings about things that you've talked about before. And I think it's really easy to get irritated and say, but I said that already. You know, why didn't you hear it? And then, you know, after a while, it kind of occurred to me that, you know what, that's actually the complete wrong way to think about it. You know, if they didn't hear it, that's my fault, right? It's, it's not that, you know, and I can't put that responsibility on the employee. I've really got to think about if the message didn't get through, why not? Or if the message didn't land well, why not? You know, why are people still asking questions about something? And I think it's really important to, to go back and, and not let you know, frustration get the better of us in these trying times and really go back and say, how do we improve our communication? And to your point, how do we make sure that everybody understands the direction that we're going um, and understands the reasons behind it before you try and move too fast? So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad you brought that up. I think that's one that we can all keep in mind. Well, and especially in your, most CRM people, your budget's gonna be changing. Maybe they've cut your budget, so there's certain segments you're not gonna even address. Or, you know, there's certain loyalty issues you're not going to be able to work on right now. So getting the team aligned about what you are going to be doing and where the focus is is really important. And that can change from time to time based on the research you're getting in, based on the response data that you're getting in. And, you know, you have to keep sharing that with the team so everybody keeps being aligned about how all this change is happening and what is going to uh, need to be done next. Last question for me, and, and this is more just um, the, the times we're in. Um, how do you think folks are doing um, in your experience with, um, with adaptation? It's um, obviously it's a little rocky in different parts of the country, but um, are people acclimating or more looking for any way to, to break out of that, that Zoom conference call mode? Um, well, there's more, multiple. So a lot of people are unemployed right now and they're scared to death. So, so that group is in, I would say in panic mode. Um, and although they're looking for new CRM type roles, they really don't know how about going looking for it. They're very concerned that they're never going to get a job again. Um, and I would say that the, there's very high anxiety and a, um, a lot of really great marketing people have been laid off. Um, the good news is that there are some, I am seeing because I do executive recruiting as well, that there are opportunities starting to come back. They're just coming back slowly. So my, my feeling would be keep um, gaining new skills and keep at it. it. It will write itself. It's just gonna take a little longer than you'd like. Then there's a group that's currently working. Um, a lot of them, especially if they have children, are feeling very frustrated that they just can't, there's too many balls in the air and they're having trouble balancing them. And I think they thought, well, we'll just do this for a month or two and it'll be all over. So anybody can hold on for six weeks or eight weeks. The idea that it's going to be um, probably until next year has got people very um, concerned. So I would say the stress levels are getting higher and people are feeling more frustrated and looking for um, ways to kind of diffuse that tension. And so the two areas that I'm seeing the most concerned are one is financial. How do I know I'm going to have my job and I'm going to get my bonus because we are probably not going to make the numbers the way we thought because consumer spending is down. And that may not, you may be doing a fabulous job and you can't impact that number. Um, and the second one beside financial um, instability is just um, the time pressure of how to figure out how to work, how to take care of your kids, how to do all the other things. Um, it's just kind of overwhelming. And I think there's a need for more breaks and more excitement. So as a manager, part of it is you kind of have to be a cheerleader. You have to uh, create breaks for your people um, and you have to create fun events for them. So one of the fun events that I actually participated in this, this week, which I thought was something that other people could do, was they called it a music um, 
after work. And what they did was they brought a couple musicians in, they brought invited people into teams, they gave you themes, you picked your favorite songs for those themes. I happened to get the love song theme, so we picked Whitney Houston and a bunch of other ones that we all loved. And then we decided uh, we would create some words to a lo new love song on a couple of keys, and then people wrote the lyrics right away, and then one group was gonna sing it as R&B, and another group created a song that they were gonna do in rap. And it was just a fun little hour uh, meeting, but it was just a break in the day. Other things that I've seen to do create breaks is um, where you just peer, um, pair people up in different combinations and have them do something um, innovative. And strangely enough, um, I've actually seen people get their families involved in their kids and um, to do projects so that it's a family affair. And it's surprising that kids have great ideas for innovation because they're not hemmed in by worrying about well, we know that doesn't work, that's gonna be financially expensive and whatever. So children's ideas of new things you could do are uh, pretty exciting and they actually can be part of the process. And sometimes including people's families um, and giving them time to do family things together that could be fun uh, is going to be part of the new work environment and you can't think of it the way you used to. Yeah, I love that. Um, I think now we are able to appreciate one another and for kind of the whole person, right? Instead of just you've got your work self and your everything else self. Um, now I think all those pieces are coming together. And to your point, I think it's making all of us, I think, feel um, more included and, and but also um, hopefully more innovative and, and uh, more creative too, that we aren't trying to compartmentalize different aspects of our lives. You know, they're all kind of coming together and uh, yeah, absolutely. Bring, bring your child to work days and a one day a week thing, right? <laughs> or a one day a year thing, I should say. Right. And I think there's more emphasis on healthy eating and on more emphasis on um, kind of moving and exercising. So I've seen a lot more sharing of you know, think meditation, um, yoga, great recipes that people are sharing with each other are great things. And I think you need to keep time in your meetings to have a little bit of that. Um, so people can do a, let's talk about how we lift each other up and give me some suggestions of what might be useful and helpful to the group. Darcy, that's uh, great advice for employers, employees, and, and folks that are out there seeking. Um, where can folks go to uh, learn more? Um, they can certainly go to our, our site, uh, pocketcrm.com. Um, where can we send folks to you to learn more? Um, you can uh, send it to my LinkedIn profile at Darcy Bevilacqua, or they can get in touch with me at dbevilacqua at executiveconnects.com. That's great. Well, thanks again for your time. Um, again, great advice. And um, please remember, if you value or learn something, please like, follow, share, and subscribe, depending on if it's LinkedIn or YouTube. Signing off from Talk and CRM, this is Colin and Megan. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Have a great day.